Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Grace's Path. So, I think we left off right before something naughty happened, swabbing the deck. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I bet you are, Malcolm, you dirty scoundrel. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Let's jump right into it. Alright, Alarm Shane, you are up. Alright, guys, enjoy. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. She did. I told her we were just friends. Even if she suspects otherwise. But I did suggest she find a bow for herself. Told her just how life-changing it could be. Grace's tone is playful. But how must have Marion reacted to that advice? Especially coming from her littlest sister turned sea creature. I consider asking for more juicy details. Details. But can't help but focus on something else she said instead. So, is that what we are? Just friends. She smirks and doesn't miss a beat. We can be whatever you like. Hmm. Huh. Grace demonstrates by slipping her arms around me and nuzzling her damn muzzle at my neck. The slippery sensation sends me orbiting. Why is this so fantastic? A tiny little white, light, white top starts to slide off her shoulders. Again, instinct kicks in. Not right now, Grace. We said we'd slow down. Uh-huh. You're dead. She's gonna kill you, boy. That was hours ago. I think it's time to speed back up. Grace, please. I need to clean up. And I should get back to the water. So what? So I feel like a grubby mess. So your sister could walk in on us any minute, so... Uh-oh. She kisses me hard. My hands travel all up and down her back. She pulls away just to glide her long tongue across my collarbone, leaving me breathless. <laughs> so how about we break for now and pick up later where we left off? A needful ache throbs through me. Helpless, I can only manage a nod. Soon. Soon. Tonight. Her eyes sparkle, and I can't say no. At the water's edge, by moonlight. Aren't you a romantic? <laughs> Ooh, boy, what you two gonna do? Play some Marvin Gaye. For the rest of the day, I stumble through my routine in a fog. Even Grand can tell that I'm distracted, and we have an unusually quiet dinner. It's because I can't stop thinking about the blue-scaled seductress waiting for me at the lock. This morning, if only for a short time, we had cut through the madness that had been these past few days. It felt natural. I even began to feel truly comfortable around her new form. Perhaps more of the same lay, lay in store for me tonight, but I can't shake a feeling that I'm standing at the end of a diving board, about to jump headfirst back into the deep. I wish there were someone with whom I could share my dilemma, seek direction, but I know deep down that only our hearts hold a compass. Part of me still wants to hold back. A part of me that feels like Grace and I have missed some crucial step, like our relationship is missing something palpable, something reciprocal. The rest of me is ready to dive right back into Grace's waters, as if it were some kind of wet drug that has us, but that had us both addicted. The way she seduces me is if I, as if she is my siren. I, her Ulysses. How entangled do I want to become? How far will until I fa How far will I follow that lure before I am trapped? Yeah. <laughs> The light in Grand's room ring, winks out. I finish my drink and pour it of the glass, downing it in one long swig. Then I quietly slip out and make my way to the rocky shores. Uh oh, I can feel it calling in the air tonight. Oh, there she is! Ooh, what a beautiful image. Wow, it's so good. Oh, it's so beautiful. Why can't I live somewhere like this? The water is still shimmering with moonlight, and in the center of it drifts Grace. She looks like a mysterious floating pearl. The whole of the lock is of her oyster. But what am I? The grain of sand that has transformed her into this shining pearl. Ooh, ooh what was that? Oh, I don't have to think of that. Instead, I began sk I began skipping skipping some rocks to let her know I am here. <laughs> um. There you go. Wow. Ooh. Uh-oh. Good evening, milady. Grace takes a few steps out of the lock, then shakes, spraying water towards me playfully. Even in the low light, I can tell she's wearing nothing but her natural swimsuit. Full speed ahead. Good evening to you, sir. I turn out to blush, seeing her display herself as openly as she does. This is just grace, I guess. Even so, my pulse races. 
Grace follows my gaze and laughs. Oh, Marion insisted on doing my laundry. Anyway, it's much more comfortable swimming unencumbered. We're all throwing caution to the wind, aren't we? I suppose we are. I was almost worried you wouldn't come. Grace, it'll take more than turning into a sea nymph to scare me away. Or a few awkward advances. I can't help but laugh. Yes, Grace's flirting has been unsubtle. Perhaps even a little awkward at times, but no less tempting. I squeeze her hand. That's just another part of your charming personality. Grace beams and gestures for us to sit down on the pebbly beach. You two are so adorable together. Oh, God! <clears throat> oh. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Yep, this is it. This is the thumbnail. We lean against each other among the stones, looking out over the glittering lock. Even more stars have come out from their hiding places behind the clouds. I know, I know that I'm still new at this. Uh, not just this. She rests her hand on her collarbone and gently draws it down along every contour of her changed body. But this! She takes my hand in both of hers and looks me in the eye with a warm smile. Gone is any trace of Grace's sarcasm and wit. I sense that she is truly opening up to me once again. And while caressing her slender fingers, I listen. I know you want to take things slower, and today, the day was swell. It really was. But? She gazes down into the sparkling waters. This feeling, I can't explain it. It's like a piece of my life was missing, and now that I've found it, I... Can't let it go? No. Two are so wonderful together. Her breath, whispering into my ear, makes me shiver. I can't get enough. Her bosom heaves heavily, and I can see the ache and desire in her eyes. For a moment, I'm taken aback. Two days ago, was it really just yet? Was it really just there yesterday? I knew Grace to be a kindred soul, but a distant one. I was even afraid we might be two ships passing in the night, and I'd never see her again. Then, in an instant, things changed. Not her personality, not her wit, her attitude toward me, and of course, her body. Was I responsible for both changes? Neither. Where do I stand in all of this? I search for her. I search her eyes for answers. Is this how Grace shows her love? Of course it is. It's what lovers do. I can't deny after everything all the changes. I feel an attraction too. It's the way I had hoped I would feel when I found the right person. My person, or in this case, my Grace. It's love, isn't it? The feeling of love, falling in love, even though I've never felt it. I know it. So, where did we leave off? The dam between us bursts, and Grace melts into me. Our bodies becoming a tangle of tongues, tail, and limbs. My reservations are washed away by our mutual wave of desire. Mm-hmm. The part that I can't show on YouTube. Because I'll be visited by the demonetization fairy. And I don't like it when she visits. <laughs> yep. Ah, yeah. I'm gonna be enjoying that on my own. Guys, uh, wishlist this game on Steam. It's gonna be coming out on Steam or go to the website. If you want the full uncensored stuff. Seriously. Oh, goodness me. The stillness of the night settles back in around us. The only sounds come from the waves and Grace's soft, steady breathing. Off course. Ooh, ooh, that's not good. <laughs> I smile at her, thankful to have shared in such a moment of intimacy. Finally returning the favor after all the time she's pleasured me. I'm eager to continue. But her expression stops me in my tracks. Rather than basking in the afterglow, her face has become furrowed with concern. What's wrong? <laughs> her expression softens. God, she's beautiful. You're so cute! Oh, she's a lovely lady. Nothing, Malcolm. That was amazing. You are amazing. <laughs> God, what a lovely moment. Grace sits up and scoops me into an embrace. One that I sense is more emotional than passionate. I return the hug tightly, still unsure what I amiss. Still unsure what is amiss. But I know Grace is holding something back. She won't look me in the eye. The mood of the night has changed. We both stay still and silent for a time. Finally, Grace lets out a soft sigh. Malcolm, you're a wonderful man. I mean it. You might even be too good for me. I don't know about that. But you deserve someone good. I'm glad we're together. She blushes. Me too. I wish anyone else would have packed their bags and fled the moment I grew fins. Part of me still wonders at the fact that I didn't. But after everything, I feel like I made the right choice. I'm not going anywhere. Hmm. Even if I were to grow even more? 
Her voice is barely a whisper. Pardon? There's more, I think. More changes? She nods, clearly worried how it will take the news. I'm still having trouble grasping what she is saying. What makes you say that? It's difficult to know. I'm not certain, but I feel like there is more inside me, still waiting to come out. Now it's my turn to furrow my brow with concern. I was having a hard enough time adjusting already. Like it did when we were in the grotto. Ah, so, oh, Malcolm, your voice. <laughs> like it did when we were in the grotto. Yes, I thought that maybe. She cuts herself off, and it takes me a moment to understand why. He thought you would keep changing, if we were intimate. Is that what this is all about? I feel pity in my gut. It can't be that, can it? I wanted to be with you. She wipes her eyes. Is she trying to convince me, or herself? But you wanted something else, too, didn't you? I'm not sure. I just... Tell me. I try not to let my anger out, but I'm frustrated in more ways than one. Why are we here, Grace? To be together, or for... Both! I won't lie to you, Malcolm. I wanted to be close to you, but I also wanted more. More of... What you already have. I sense it. I'm still changing. I have to be. I just can't figure out how to release the changes. This is ludicrous. Grace, I want you to be with me because you want to be. Not because you're craving something I can't give you. I know. I know. I'm so sorry. Forgive her. The worst part is that I'm not mad at her. I'm mad at myself. I let myself be caught off guard, and I feel frustrated at myself for not recognizing it sooner. I resent my own naivete. And I know she's mad at herself, too. I'm simply mad at the circumstances, and I can't help her through it. Not in any way I know of. It's alright, I'm not angry with you. I just... I wish you had told me sooner. We go silent again. Exposed and confused, we turn our heads back to the water. Is this our first fight? It's not a fight. It's a uh, miscommunication. I try to put myself in her fins. What if I loved her and she held the key to my every dream? Wouldn't I want that from her? Of all people, I'd never want you to be mad at me. Malcolm, everything I've ever told you came from my heart. I believe you. I do. I wish I could make more of your dreams come true. But I don't know if I can be that man. Nor do I know if I should be. It's late. I should go home. I want her to tell me to stay, to beg me to not to, to beg me not to leave. But all she does is whisper once again. I don't want to lose you. In my head, the reply echoes loudly over and over. Tell her to never lose you. Say it, you daft man. I don't want to lose you, Grace. I stand up and start off along the path home. My stomach in a million knots. I should stay, talk things over more. But what is there to say? I'm afraid she is using me. I don't think that. Or do I? I don't know. All I know is that I need a drink. And there's a bottle at home with my name on it. Hmm. Yes. Drown your sorrows in the drink. Maybe things will be different tomorrow. I hope so. Let's let these two reconcile, but there has to be some kind of other conflict as well. Hmm, I wonder what's gonna happen. She's gonna be, she's, she's gonna get really big and that's gonna draw attention. Last night's whiskey left me with no new answers, but it did leave me with a pounding headache. After my morning routine, I make my way to the stag and nanny, eager for some hair of the dog. <laughs> Along the way, I think aloud, no one, no one is around here to hear me but Hazel. All that joy, all that passion, shattered by her, her need for something more. Can you believe she reacted that way? Hazel. Hazel abruptly stops and refuses to continue, but I dismount to see what's the matter. Her narrow eyes appear to be judging me. What? Don't give me that look. <laughs> I tug on her lead, but she still won't budge. Alright, fine. Maybe I didn't react well either, but you can't make a woman happy all the time. The mare before me is living proof of that. I hand her a carrot, and she's mollified for now. If only it were always that easy. <laughs> but a woman... What a woman Grace is, though. Her brand of adventure is something I never, I know I'll never find elsewhere. It just doesn't exist. I try to be positive, but the sharp hurt I feel, thinking that she's after something that I can't give her. That's a pain I can't shake. What do you think I should do? <laughs> Hazel looks at me blankly, still gnawing on the carrot. It makes, her, it makes me wonder why I'm asking her, or if I don't have the answer already. Because I know well where I, I know well where I should go. 
The only thing on my mind besides Grace is a tall pint. Alright, I'll go make amends right after this. Don't be wandering off now. <laughs> Since she still won't budge, I tethered my horse to a barrel and traveled the rest of the way to the pub by foot. <laughs> silly, silly mare. Hazel. She's got quite a personality and she hasn't even said a word. Take a seat at the bar. The pub is empty except for the town broom maker, Mr. Tight, who stands at the far, far side of the pub, cornered by Bulgare. Uh-oh. Did the real catch that, Gemma? You be careful of the next fellow that looks your daughter's way. Bulgare gives the gentleman a hearty slap on the back, and Spotsbean comes over with a spring in his step. They're raided. Mr. Tight qu quietly makes his escape. Good day, Mr. Campbell. What can I, what can I get you? Something strong, or stronger. How about just strong, Bulgare? They're coming right up. He sets the ale down in front of me. The foam spills over the side of the glass, and he has it mopped up before I can blink. You know, you came at a good time, lad. There's a fear that I'd have no more customers with whom to parley. It's barely noon. Not typically a busy hour in the Stag and you know. Bulgare has poured a pint of his own, and takes a, gr takes a great big swig of it. No, I guess not. Not anymore. As I take a swig, too, my eyes drift to the silent piano, and... Oh, how's the pub been firing since Jesse left? Fine enough, lad, fine enough. I do miss the hubbub, though. And the last, too, real angel. Scuttlebutt. I find myself missing her, too. As close as I've become to the other McLeod sisters, it would have been nice to have spent more time catching up with her. I'd at least have liked to have said goodbye. I raise my glass toward the piano. To Jessie. She was a class act, for sure. No sense using the past tense, my boy. She still is. I'm sure her act will be a big hit wherever she takes it. He's probably right. City folk are bound to eat it right up. Jesse's performance is as sultry as it is audacious. Sultry and audacious. Words that I've never, never words that I would never guess would apply to at least two of the McLeod sisters. I prepare to take another large gulp, only to find my glass empty. The pub owner looks on in surprise. Ah, but you're not here to talk about old Bogata's business, are you? Another pint? Bogata seems to be in a talkative mood. As he refills the pint glass, I debate what, if anything, I want to share. <laughs> Say, uh, Bogair, what can I help you with? Let me guess, lady problems? You're a mind reader, aren't you? Twas your frown that gave it away. Easy to recognize when you have seen that woe and despair before. I dare say every young lad who's passed through here was through here has worn that expression at least once. Bogair breaks into a huge smile. I'm proud of you, boy. Why's that? Returned from overseas less than a month ago and already struck by Cupid's arrow. What a welcome home. I hadn't thought of it like that. You're very right. Ah, you Bulgar's always right. Listen, we all need a women, Malcolm. They're what makes life worth living. He leans in as if to share an important secret. But I can tell you, they sure as hell don't need us. I share in his laughter, but honestly, I can't tell if he's kidding. I hope to God that he is. <laughs> so, what exactly is the trouble? Where do I start? I really don't want to complain, but... Have you ever been the happiest you've ever been, and the most confused? Aye, once in a war, I had procured a bottle of officer's whiskey. Best I'd ever had. Drank the whole thing at once, and couldn't even find my way back to my unit. Well, Gary, that's not quite what I mean. His boisterous laugh fills the pub. I know, lad, I'm just pulling your leg. Sounds to me like you're talking about love. Oh, I wouldn't call it that. A healthy dose of confusion and contentment? That's love, my boy. Enjoy this while it lasts. It's likely to get worse. Worse? What do you mean? The mystery, the confusion. Well, that wears off. Fret not about those problems. Just give it a wee bit of your time. The pure pleasure, that turns into something quite different. Really? How so? Bulgare places a hand on my shoulder and gives me a stern look. That's for you to find out. It's all part of the journey. You feel like you're escaping the real world for a good smidgen of time. Then you find yourself right back in reality. And it won't be as magical. Nay, it'll be even better, just different. You'll see. You've been through this yourself. Does Bagheera Bukhan look like a man who hasn't seen the glorious days of Lass's love and affection? You're making me laugh. I, I didn't mean it that way, Bulgar. I bet you have to. I bet you have to fight ladies off with a stick. Aye, with the whole caber. I've certainly been enraptured. I've certainly been enraptured by a woman. Had her cu had her cunning out with my own. Been tempted by her feminine wiles. That's the good grace of being a man, Malcolm. I snicker into my pint glass. <laughs> Good grace, all right. If you're asking my advice, I'd say treat every day like your last. The good Lord has a plan for you, and there's no stopping it. Malcolm, you of anyone should know this. He notices I finished my second ale and pours me a third without missing a beat. 
You were in the war long enough. You worked in long days, hard hours, in every kind of field. Embrace today. Hell, embrace your woman. There's no telling what tomorrow brings. What if I'm not enough for her? So what? One day she loves you, the next she doesn't. What of it? Love her. Love her, and only hope that she'll, that she'll, that you'll get it in return. That's what old Bulgare tells all his sullen manly patrons. Really? That's your undying advice? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna pause it right there. <laughs> it's fun. I'm getting dating advice from Bulgare. I love it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!